Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. And today we have a piece of news that is coming out that is, again, not really good for the MCU. It seems like uh, Marvel Studios uh, recently, since uh, since uh, Comic Con, has really been kind of striking out lately when it comes to certain things. You know, we have the stuff with uh, Thor four. Uh, we have the the gender swapping roles with Eternals. Uh, you know, the rumors of Kamala Khan going into D twenty three this weekend, and now we have news that Sony is pulling out of their deal with Marvel uh, to co opt uh, Spider Man. So basically, what this means is that the Tom Holland version of Spider Man is no longer going to be in major MCU films. And this is even weirder compounded with the fact that Tom Holland and John Watts, the director, are both still signed on for two more films with Sony, which means that Sony is still going to make those films. However, Spider-Man is not going to be part of the quote-unquote MCU anymore, even though it's still going to be Tom Holland, and presumably he is still going to be in the same, he's still going to be playing the same version of Spider-Man. So this entire thing is extremely confusing, and I'm going to kind of go from the start just to kind of clarify certain things and leading up to what it what appears to be the breakdown of uh, negotiations between Marvel and uh, and Sony. So originally, Spider-Man was co-opted after the failure of Amazing Spider-Man 2, uh, and it was basically because Sony had driven the character into the ground, and they felt the only way that they could make money off of him again was to try and strike a deal with Marvel in order to make films. They didn't want to give him back because he was really their biggest moneymaker at the time, and he still is, person, uh, because uh, Far From Home just became Sony's most profitable film ever uh, a couple days ago, which makes this announcement even stranger. Um, but they co-opted him out to Marvel for a five-picture deal. Uh, the fifth picture in that deal was Spider-Man Far From Home, which came out this past July. Uh, and after there was rumors going around that if that film didn't hit a billion dollars, then Marvel would not retain the character and stuff like that. And well, I shouldn't say rumors, but that was that was something that was widely reported. Um, and the movie did make over a billion dollars, uh, which was the third film in the MC the all three of the th MCU films this year made over a billion dollars for Disney. Uh, and uh, well, Spider Man Far From Home made that for Sony because part of the deal was that Spider Man could be included in the larger MCU films like uh, Infinity War and Endgame, and then. Uh, Sony would continue to do the solo films, but they would produce them and fund them and collect all the profits, but they would still be in the MCU, so they could they could basically borrow MCU actors, like what they did with Homecoming with Robert Downey Jr. Um, and that, again, that was a five-picture deal. So we had Civil War, uh, Homecoming, Infinity War, Endgame, and now Far From Home, and now that deal ran out. And we were, they were both parties were expected to come back to the negotiating table. Now, most people expected Sony to do the smart thing, which was to say, okay, we're going to renew this for another whatever it would be, five pictures or something like that. You know, probably a couple Avengers movies. Sony still had two pictures on the docket, as previously stated. Um, so it would probably be, be another four or five picture deal, probably last for another, you know, five, six years, or maybe a little bit less, maybe probably like, you know, four or five, uh, depending on when they were going to have Spider-Man come back in again. Um, and the thing is that Marvel was setting up a whole thing where Spider-Man was really going to take the place of Iron Man, and they that was even more reinforced with uh, Far From Home. But Sony, being the idiots that they are, decided that they want Spider-Man all to themselves now, because now that Marvel has rebooted him and revitalized him, in terms of the public eye, uh, they can now take him and do whatever they want with him. Uh, and basically, uh, they believe that now that they can kind of stand on their own with him, which is a horrendously bad idea. Now, I will say this, and I will say this once, is that Spider-Man, uh, when he was still with Sony, those original Sam Raimi films were really good except for three. Uh, and then Amazing Spider-Man films were passable, they weren't great, and basically people were kind of tired of the character, because we had already had uh, one, we had, already, we had had basically five movies in the course of a 12-year span, or uh, a little bit more than that, probably like a 13-year a span, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm right the first time, about a 12-year span. We had had five films and two different franchises, because they had taken a five-year break between Spider-Man 3 and Amazing Spider-Man 1. 
And people were kind of tired of the character. So then they decided to co-opt him out to Marvel because they couldn't do anything more with him. And they, they thought they had basically milked the cow dry. And they Marvel included him in the MCU. They made him younger. And they revitalized the character. And people enjoyed Spider-Man again. People liked Spider-Man. Now, do I think that Homecoming and Far From Home are better films than some of the Sony ones? No. I went over that in uh, my Spider-Man vs. Spider-Man vs. Spider-Man video. Uh, where I... You know, I still say that Tobey Maguire is probably the best one that we've had, but Andrew Garfield still has very much room to develop, and that's the thing. So apparently what this breakdown was over is that Marvel Studios wanted a 50% profit cut on the Spider-Man, the solo Spider-Man outings that were linked into the MCU. Uh, now, they didn't want anything to do with necessarily the Venom solo film or Morbius or Silver and Black or any of those other uh, developing films that they're doing. But uh, Marvel wanted that 50% cut of profits from those solo Spider-Man outings that they were allowing Sony to do. And they also wanted the ability to expand the character roster by bringing in uh, Spider-Man villains into the MCU, such as Venom. And because of that, uh, Sony did not want to do it, and they, they wanted to basically keep the autonomy that they have uh, and kind of reap the benefits of the relationship. Because, to be fair, Marvel doesn't necessarily get a shit ton out of uh, doing these co-optings. The, 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 those original films, they got to include Spider-Man in those films, and they probably gave them a profit boost uh, to the films that they did have him in. But in reality, they probably didn't get a whole lot uh, from that in terms of revenue. So they wanted a little bit more of a share, considering that Sony is basically... Uh, basically leeching off of them, um, leeching off of the, the MCU brand, and that was the whole point, is that Sony could leech off of the MCU brand, and they wanted to make these solo films like Venom and like Morbius and Silver and Black and stuff, and then they could reap those as well, and they could basically, they, even though they're not really connected to the MCU currently, the idea was that they could basically co-opt MCU films. Uh, and expand that beyond Spider-Man and kind of act like an unofficial satellite studio to uh, Disney and uh, Marvel Studios. Now, I will go in... Because of, of those disagreements, uh, Sony chose to step away from the negotiating table and they are unwilling uh, to allow Spider-Man to be co-opted in any other MCU films. Now, there is still a window, because as far as we know, Spider-Man is not showing up again in the MCU until after 2022. And that may change at D23, because this weekend we're going to probably find out a few more Marvel properties, so we're going to know a bit more. But since we do know that, uh, it does give a little bit more room for them to maybe work something out for the future. But this is incredibly dumb for Sony to do. Now, look, they are going to lose profits uh, by uh, allowing Spider-Man, uh, by taking those Spider-Man MCU films and giving up some of the profits uh, or half the profits to, uh, to Marvel Studios. But the thing is, Marvel Studios was also willing to co-opt it with them. So Marvel Studios is probably going to be paying for some of the price tag as well. Um, and also, I believe, uh, don't quote me on this, but I believe uh, the, uh, the MCU actors that were showing up in those solo Spider-Man outings, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, John Favreau as Happy Hogan and Tony Stark as Iron Man, they were under Marvel contract, so I don't think Sony actually had to pay them for those films. So that was something that Marvel was kind of footing the bill for, for in addition to allowing Sony to place their film inside the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So there's a lot to kind of dissect with this thing, because this deal was so strange uh, and so weird in terms of the, the way that it, it worked out with all these characters. Uh, and really all Marvel wanted was kind of the piece of the pie that they've basically been missing out on. Now, Disney has more money than God at this point, but uh, but you also have to take into consideration the fact they just spent 70-something billion dollars uh, in the Fox buyout. So they're trying to recoup those losses in certain ways. Obviously, Disney Plus is going to give them a huge huge boost, but they also want a little bit of that cut from the Spider-Man movies that they've been allowing Sony to take. And the 
other problem is is that they wanted that expanded character list basically they wanted to be able to use more than just spider-man uh in those uh, team-up movies and you know uh, and the uh the general sony supporting cast um so they wanted venom they wanted you know vulture and shocker and mysterio and you know the, those ca those characters in those in that film uh, in there, it allow them to be used in the MCU, uh, given Fo given Sony's permission. And again, Sony chose to walk away from this arrangement. Now, this is very dumb for Sony because even though they would be giving up some of the profits from those solo Spider-Man outings, uh, they're also giving up that MCU tag. So. What Marvel can probably do is they can say, okay, you can have the character back, but you can't use the MCU suit, and you can't use this, and you can't use this, and you can't use this, and you can't have any of our MCU characters in your movies. It has to be confined now. You can't use, you know, Happy Hogan can't appear in your movie. You can't have Peter Parker running Stark Enterprises. None of that. So even if Tom Holland shows up in another film, it's possible it's going to be in an entirely different new rebooted universe so we're going to have another spider-man reboot on our hands which is just another confusing thing for moviegoers and that's the last thing you want to do because the people that follow along with the mcu that don't really follow uh, entertainment news they're going to be entirely confused when they start seeing advertisements for the next solo spider-man outing and they don't understand like why where, where is this character why is this not happening wasn't he like doing stuff with stark enterprises before why is this not going on what, what happened to, to ned and and why is this a different character you know stuff like that they're going to be very cons they're, they're going to be confused and then sony is inevitably going to fuck it up because it's sony and they ran that character into the ground once. They can very easily do it again. And what they're going to try and do is they're going to try and do like a Venom crossover. And they're going to do a bunch of these other different uh, little things probably. And they'll, pr they'll try and cross them over with some of the other stuff. But th th here's the thing. Venom, I feel like, was a happy accident for them. I don't think that that movie... When that movie was announced, I thought it was going to be a colossal failure. I think you got Tom Hardy. You got a decent script. And you got a good director. And they put all their eggs in that basket. But now that that was a success, you're going to go into Venom 2 and it's probably going to be complete shit because they're going to think, oh, it's going to be the same thing as Amazing Spider-Man 2. They're going to say, oh, we're going to build a franchise. And they're going to jump the gun because they've already jumped the gun pretty much already. So Because you see that they're going to have Venom 2 with and Andy Serkis directing, which I think is kind of interesting. But you're going to have Venom 2. And then you're also going to have... Uh, the Morbius movie, which is filming with Jared Leto, that's going to be a colossal failure. I think Silver and Black, which is the Black Cat Silver Sable film, is also still on the table, but that's probably going to be a train wreck. Uh, so, ultimately, really, they made one halfway decent film, and they think that that means that they can, oh, we can just take him back, and we're all set. We're good. Uh, th this, is the, th this is the folly that Sony has made in the past, and I think what's going to happen inevitably is that Sony is going to come back to the negotiating table because when the major MCU community sees this, they are going to uh, probably, uh, there's going to be a huge backlash against Sony for this. People are going to be pissed because a lot of people like the Tom Holland version of Spider-Man. And when they find out that he's not going to be in the MCU anymore, but they're still going to try and make movies with him, those movies are going to fail. I think those movies are going to fail unless they try and disguise it as an MCU film, and it really isn't. That's the only way they're going to get by it is with dishonest advertising, uh, which they've done in the past. Uh, but ultimately, I think this is another bad blow for the MCU, and I think D23 uh, could be even could make things even worse. Uh, but th th this is not looking good right now. You know, again, this is leading right up to D23. So uh, I think that. There, there's going to be some issues moving forward with this. I think Sony is going to have a colossal backlash on their hands in their PR department because of this. Uh, and I think that ultimately this is going to be bad uh, for Marvel films going forward. Um, but I want to know what you think. You know, Put your thoughts in the comments. Are you happy that Spider-Man might be going back to just you know being in his own films, not involved in the MCU at all? Um, or do you not care at this point? Do you like the Tom Holland Spider-Man? Do you hate him? Uh, you know, put your thoughts in the comments. Again, I like to know what you're thinking. Hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?